Hi everyone, welcome to Itsy Bitsy's live read from Loving Jake by Lisa Lene. Chapter 1 Jake drove past the large two-door home before parking next to the curb and shutting off the car's engine. It Had it really been four years since he had attended one of George Urban's infamous Fourth of July parties? Four years since he had last seen friends whom he had considered his closest in the world? He didn't question why he had lost contact with the people he had considered family, because he knew the answer. He knew all too well why he had to leave and had to escape. A familiar churning deep in his gut threatened to surface as he started, stared out the car side's window, lost in a better place of better off forgotten. The, be the day four years ago had been warm and pleasant, as typical for Northern California in July. Over a hundred people had gathered for the annual celebration, where the hors d'oeuvres were plentiful and the alcohol flowed freely, probably too freely, as several of the guys had ended up in the swimming pool by mid-afternoon wearing grass skirts and nothing underneath them. Some of them is, you can ne never unsee, he acknowledged with a grin, teasing the corner of his lips. His thoughts sobered. It had also been one of those rare occasions that he and Brenda had not argued for most of the afternoon, at least not until George and Linda had made their announcement. They were expecting their second child, the second in two years. The last he had heard from a source he couldn't recall. His ex and her husband had two children and had moved to Arizona. She had found someone to ride her with what he could never give her, could give no woman. I hope you're happy, Brenda, he whispered. Shocked to realize he had held the steering wheel in a death grip, he released his hands, mentally shaking from his mind the disturbing Im images of the past. Although his heart beat faster than normal, he was ready to go to the party and reunite with his friends. He was determined to leave the past where it belonged, in the past, and enjoy himself this afternoon. He retrieved a bottle of Cabernet from the trunk with a brief glance at the label. The name of the French winery was prominently embossed at the top. A grin curled the corner of his lips. George and Linda, like many of his friends, liked to boast that California wines were equal to French ones, and Jake liked to provoke them whenever he had the chance. He brushed the wayward strand of hair from his forehead and placed his sunglasses on top of his head. His eyes flickered over the many cars lining the street. He recognized none of them. The flashy sports cars that were once he and his friend's sole preference for transportation were gone. Range Rovers and Mercedes crossovers stood in their place. Laughter bubbled inside of him. Family vehicles. He chuckled with a glance over his shoulder at the Ferrari, gazing fondly upon the expensive sports car, and was grateful it had, all, it had only two doors and would never be considered a cross between a station wagon and anything else. He strolled down the sidewalk, his long legs revealed in a pair of chino shorts, the normal cowboy swagger that women watched longly as he reported from the Globe was less obvious in a pair of shorts and leather sandals than when he wore his usual worn jeans and snakeskin boots. Jake drew in a long breath of air before ringing the doorbell the familiar two, of the two, familiar two-story home. My biological clock is ticking. I'm only 31 years old. I have plenty of time to have kids, Kimberly exclaimed in expiration. She looked at her sister and then over to Catherine, the wife of one of their brother's best friends, who only shrugged in response, and then back at her sister. Why couldn't Carly understand that? Everyone needed to get married and have children before they were 30, as she had done. Her sister had chastised her the previous evening for not planning to bring a date to their brother's annual 4th of July party, and even though Kimberly had enthusiastically explained that she did not need male companionship to enjoy a party, Carly wasn't convinced. As far as Carly was concerned, her older sister couldn't possibly be happy without, without any prospects for walking down the aisle in her, new, in her near future. It wasn't as if she didn't date. Kimberly mentally defended herself, a deep skull crinkling her forehead, but then she forced herself to admit she really didn't. 
It's just that she preferred to think of it as more of an extended, self-imposed, sexual dry spell rather than her inability to meet a guy she was even remotely interested in. A cold shiver slid over her skin as she recalled two of the men she had dated in the past five years, each for much longer than should be considered mentally sane. Besides, she rationalized, and she didn't want to worry about entertaining someone when her family members did their best to take advantage of her photography skills, insisting she take plenty of photos during the party. Of course I wouldn't turn down mind-blowing sex with, she mumbled in, then halted in mid-sentence because something had diverted her sister's attention elsewhere, and Carly was no longer listening to her. Carly, hello? Earth to Carly? Wow, don't look now, Kimler, but I think the man to provide you with mind-blowing sex just walked in, Carly explained excitedly. Half afraid of what she would find, Kimberly twisted her head to look over her shoulder at what or whom her sister referred, and as she quickly and as quickly as she had turned, she spun back around again. Only now her heart threatened to pound out of her chest, and her mouth gaped open, and for the life of her, she couldn't seem to shut it. Jake Taylor was here, at her brother's house, at his annual Fourth of July party. After four years, here, Jake Taylor, Jake, here, and the one man who had the ability to stir the passion within her was something as simple as a smile or a glance from his hazel warm eyes, the one man she had loved for almost 20 years. What is going on? What's gotten into the two of you, Catherine? The third in their trio piped up. Jake Taylor just walked in. He's one of George's best friends, and he's also a friend of your husband's. He was out of the country last year and missed your wedding. Kimberly's been in love with him since the eighth grade. Carly had Carly moved to the edge of her seat, sat up straight, and peered over Catherine's shoulder at the party's newest arrival. I have not. How could you say such a thing? Kimberly quickly sputtered but not fast enough to prevent a heat blush from creeping up her neck and cheeks. Kimberly, give me and everyone else a break. You followed the guy like a lovesick puppy as a kid. It wasn't much better when we got older. Only then, you hung on his every word as if it was gospel. Everyone knew how you felt about Jake. They did? Kimberly searched her sister's face for the signs of earlier teasing and found none. Even Jake? Of course he did. He would have to have been blind not to, Carly waved, her hand in a sweeping gesture. She couldn't have been that, uh, that obvious, could she? Oh, who was she kidding? She inwardly cringed. The smug expression on Carly's face confirmed it. Jake had known about how she felt about him all this time, and it hadn't mattered because he had never been interested in her. She was George's little sister to him and nothing else always and forever the little sister. If Catherine hadn't grabbed Kimberly's arm, she would have made a run for it. And from Carly's knowing expression, she knew it too. Okay, you two, what gives? You know I'm the new kid on the block and don't have a single ounce of dirt on anyone. So spill it. I want details, especially if you think this guy is a potential candidate to offer up mind-blowing sex. I will want details on that. Also, after the fact. Never hurts to learn a new thing or two, Catherine added pointedly, with a smirk in Kimberly's direction. Kimberly blew away a long curl of her hair that had fallen into her eyes with an air of defeat. Two of the most persistent people she knew stared back at her, and she didn't have a chance of avoiding the subject of Jake Taylor. She took a deep breath and decided, as Catherine el eloquently put it, to spill it. Fine, you want details, here they are. Kimberly glared at her sister and her amused expression before she turned her back on her to face Catherine. Jake lived down the street from us. He's George's age. I've sort of had a crush on him for a while. She avoided a glance at his sister because she was likely doing something as juvenile, juvenile as rolling her eyes. Anyway, I was and always will be George's little sister to him. Four years his junior. Jake dated, married, and divorced, and without a second glance in my direction. Period. End of story. 
Hearing herself say it out loud, she realized she had as had held on to a bunch of foolish hopes and dreams all these years, and it was time to let them go. How can you say that, Curly smirked? Carly smirked, her disbelief clear in her ear-piercing wail. You never even let him know how you felt, at least not directly. The few times he tried to talk to you, you ran in the opposite direction as fast as he could. Kimberly gripped the edge of the table and dug her fingernails into the soft wood. What does it matter? Anyway, you said yourself that he has always known how I felt about him. He wasn't interested in me then, and he won't be now. Carly shook her head. Wow, for a social influencer with over 20,000 followers on Instagram, you sure are down on yourself. Kimberly, Kimberly's eyes bulged wide. I post photos of things I find interesting, she shot back in a whispered hiss. That doesn't mean I have this unrealistic view of life, my life specifically. I'm not going to humiliate myself by making a play for Jake, and you aren't going to try anything either. Promise me, Carly. Carly sh snort shot through Kimberly like a bunch of tiny pins sticking into her skin. Kimberly, you were a teenager, and when you finally grew up and graduated college, he had already hooked up with his ex. That's changed now. You're all grown up, and he's available again. From the gossip I gathered over the last couple of years, he's been wrapped up in his career, and according to People magazine last month, he's not in a serious relationship. Carly turned to Catherine and added, He's an international correspondent, kind of like Anderson Cooper, only hipper, which is pretty amazing since Anderson Cooper is hip. She looked at her sister and placed her hand on her upper arm. Kim, come on, Carly said encouragingly. He's not involved with anyone. This could be your chance to... Um, excuse me, interrupted Catherine with a nervous laugh. But if the subject are of our discussion is still the guy who is about six foot two, sun bleached hair, and a body that could definitely offer mind blowing sex, and a lot of it, I'd s then I'd say we have about two minutes before he's standing in front of us. Kimberly grasped. There was a flock of butterflies parting down in her stomach, and it felt as if a few of them may have made their way to her throat and were looking for a quick exit. A quick Cheek over, check over her sister's shoulder confirmed her worst fears. Jake was headed in a path that led him straight to them. So much for escaping before he noticed our trio, she thought gumly. If she hadn't spent so much time trying to defend herself, she could be inside George's house right now, hiding in a bedroom closet, or better yet, making a beeline for the front door. She chewed nervously on her bottom lip. Had she remembered to put on makeup this morning? What about deodorant? Had she remembered to put on deodorant before darting off to run errands before the party? Yeah, right. Sure she did. She bent her head and discreetly sniffed each armpit. Why me? She groaned inwardly, right before a voice from the past shot through her, sending every butterfly in her stomach into, a ma into massive chaos. Hello, ladies. Jake. Carly scrambled out of her chair and into arms as fast as the very pregnant body allowed her. I didn't know you were coming. When did you arrive? Have you seen George yet? Carly, you haven't changed at all, have you? Still shy as ever. Jake laughed in a deep, thick, sexy tone that replaced the earlier pin pricks with chills skating along Kimberly's skin, except maybe for that little basketball you're now sporting. Do next month, Carly smiled proudly with a pat to her protruding stomach. Jake, she continued, I would like to introduce you to Catherine Sinclair, Rick's wife. They married last year. It's a pleasure to meet you, Catherine. Carly tilted her head toward her sister. And of course, you remember Kimberly. Kimberly watched the warmth of his smile spread across his lips and licked her own in response. He was more handsome than she remembered. His sun-bronzed skin smoothed with only thin creases at the corner of his eyes when he smiled his hair a shade lighter than brown, thick and pulled back from his face by a leather band at his nape. She looked into his eyes and found him staring at the honey-colored irises reflecting something close to amusement. Her eyes grew wide, and she moved quickly 
moved them quickly to the region of his chest. Thank you for listening.